this world. What beauty, it's unbelievable. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's okay, it was an accident. I saw the whole thing. No, this, I had no idea. Your arm is so fragile. I suppose so. I never really thought about it that way. Everything is relative, I suppose. Where I'm from, everything is metal. The ground doesn't sway when I walk. I don't leave marks for my feet, Tread. I should have known better. So, Optimus Prime? That's your name? Correct. Damn. That sounds cool. How'd you get a name like that? The Prime name was passed down to me from the previous leader of our kind. It signifies my role within the Autobot hierarchy. As much as I wish it were so, I didn't come up with the name myself. Oh. And you? What kind of name, Miss Spike? Ah, uh, when I was little, my hair would always stick up like this. My mom called me Spiky. I guess it just stuck. What is mom? You know, a mother, mom and dad. These words are foreign to me. Well, my mom and dad, they made me, I guess. <laughs> this is tough to explain. Um, you know, family? Family. That is a concept I know well. When I first read the Skybound comics, I did not know what I was getting myself into. I never really read much of IDW, and to be honest, the comic industry is in a bit of a downward spiral for the most part. But when I heard that the Transformers license was going to be passed down from IDW to Skybound, the company behind some of my favorite comics of all time like Invincible and The Walking Dead, I was actually kind of excited. While I wasn't willing to, you know, just put my faith in Skybound, at the same time, I was at the very least intrigued. But then, one random day, on a whim, I just decided to read the comics. And to say that Transformers Skybound is peak Transformers, it's an understatement. First, I need to give you some background on like what type of fan I am. Transformers as a franchise has existed for a while now. It's currently celebrating its 4 year anniversary by the time of this video. With mixed results. But Transformers is a franchise that has been around for a long, long time. There's people that started with the G1 Saturday morning cartoon. There's people that started out with the Unicron trilogy. Even some that started with the comics, the Japanese continuity, or even the Dramaco Bay movies, which is where I fall in. Now, unlike most Babers fans who, you know, just like the movies and don't exactly, you know, particularly like the simplicity of G1, I actually really do like G1. It has its own unique charm that as a kid I always liked and as a grown up I appreciate even more. But what happens when when you mix the brutality, the action, and the cruelty of the behaviors towards our favorite robots with the optimism, the simplicity, and the charm of the G1 cartoon, you get the Skybound comics. The Skybound comics in my opinion are something very, very special. Anyone who's read them will agree to that. And before we go on, this video will also have minor spoilers to the Skyrim comics. Currently, by this point in the comic run, we had just gotten to issue 6 and we have concluded the first arc of the series. So I take it that by this point most of you have read it, but if not, don't worry, I won't spoil too much. I'll still leave some things big, especially towards the end. Transformers Skybound almost reminds me a bit of Godzilla Minus One. And now, I know that must be very weird. And look, I'm not a Godzilla fan, but I watch Minus One with my friend who edits my videos sometimes, who's so actually a huge Godzilla fan. And that film alone really made me like Godzilla. I went from being like, eh, towards it to actually really liking it now. And I think the core of the Skyrim comics and Godzilla Minus One is the human story. 
And I know that's weird because us Beavers fans, you know, just movie fans in general, always say the same thing. We are tired of the humans. We don't want to see them. We just want to see the Transformers. But the thing is that Godzilla minus one proves that, well, yes, most fans might want robots and, you know, monster kaiju action, which there's nothing wrong with that. At the core of it all, if you can tell a good story with relatable human characters, your audience will resonate. And I think that applies to the Skybound comics as well. Because despite all the action, despite all the gore, all the sadness and tragedy that is part of the comic line so far, there is something very human in the way our characters relate to aliens that transform into robots. The story follows Sparky and Spike with Wiki. Spark's a bit of an alcoholic after the loss of his son, and Spike doesn't exactly know how to connect with him after that tragic loss. The relationship is kinda strained. This causes Spike to strike out on his own with his friend Carly, and they eventually discover the Transformers. And from this point on, it kinda looks like the comic is gonna go in a very familiar direction. Boy discovers the Transformers, the Transformers wake up and they continue their war on Earth. With Optimus, Bumblebee and a few familiar faces fighting against Mecha and Starscream. But instead, the comic takes a different route from the usual Transformers tropes and decides to focus on all the characters that are not just Bumblebee and Megatron. And to make it clear that this is not your dad's Transformers, the first thing the comic decides to do is to kill off Bumblebee. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this, this was huge. It was insane. I did not expect that whatsoever. But the comic makes it very clear from the get-go that this Transformers comic won't be like most continuities. In fact, the comic actually has a lot of dark moments. Optimus Prime reps off his own army and uses it as a weapon to fight against Skywarp. We see Starscream and several of the Decepticons gleefully kill off many humans in some very over-the-top beavers type of ways, making the Decepticons look very unhinged, like something out of Generation 2. And important characters that you think will last a long time or be relevant throughout the entire universe get killed off almost in the same issues they're introduced. And you know what? I kind of like that. Now that sounds a bit weird, but if you're a Babers fan like I believe most of my audience is, I believe most of you guys will probably remember this little tag left from the first movie. Some have come to protect us, most have come to destroy us. Their war our world. Now that small tackling is something that has always resonated with me, especially when I was a kid. When I was little, the Transformers were really cool, in general. The Autobots were really cool, whenever we saw a new one on screen, everyone really got excited about it. The Transformers in a way were kinda special, especially the Autobots, because we knew that every Autobot life was precious. When certain characters we love die like Raja and Ironhide, we felt that. Because in a way, the movies made it very clear that not all Autobots was safe, anyone could die at any time for any reason. And it really gave the feeling that the Autobots were the underdogs and there were not that many of them. So every Autobot life we saw on screen and everyone that went on and died, their life was very precious to us fans. When someone died, we mourned that. And the comics here gave me that same vibe. In a way, it sort of makes me feel like we're in 2007 all over again. But that's not to say that the comic just kills off Transformers just for the sake of it. This is something that the Beavers was criticized a lot for. A lot of the other ones in the Beavers just died for no reason and very unceremoniously. However, the Skyban comics makes every death feels meaningful, like it serves a purpose to whether dehumanize the Decepticons a bit more make us sympathize for the Autobots and their losses. And while Bumblebee's death could be argued was just shock factor, at the same time it does serve a purpose. And that is arguably the main theme of the Transformers comics, family. Which I know is such kind of cliche, especially since the Fast and Furious has kind of ruined that line in media. But this is what I like about the Transformers comics so far. It makes me feel for the Transformers. It makes me feel for the humans, which is a weird thing for me to say because I went on that I never cared about the humans in Transformers media, aside from the kids in Transformers Prime and arguably Charlie from the Mombi movie. And Lennox, but that's because he's a badass. But this is what I mean when I compare this to Godzilla Minus One. The monsters or robot story in this time is intertwined with the very human relatable story. Some of you guys out there might have some problems with your parents, so maybe seeing the struggle between Sparky and Spike might help you relate to them. It doesn't feel like what we're seeing is there just for show because we need a cool action scene. Everything that we see in the comics feels like it serves a purpose. And seeing how our human cast and our robot cast can relate to one another and sympathize with each other's emotions and struggles serves to humanize both sides and makes the story feel more cohesive. 
and interesting. Spike knows all about how it feels like to lose family, so when he sees Optimus cradling Bumblebee's corpse, he can relate to that, which gives him the courage to try and help the Autobots. Because he sees Optimus and Bumblebee in the relationship they have, like a father grieving for his son, something that he knows all too well. Carly's dad was killed by Starscream, and she wants revenge against the Decepticon, something that Cliff Jumper understands too well since he also lost family to Starscream. Optimus sees the humans care for one another and work really hard to preserve their injured, something that as a leader and someone who's responsible for the life of his soldiers is able to relate to all too well, which motivates him to actually partly sacrifice himself for the sake of them. Both Sparky and Optimus have seen war and they know how it changes you, and they're able to connect that way, and that's just it. Connections. I feel like the comic kind of brings the movie Optimus Prime's wars to life. In the Microwave movies, Optimus Prime always talked about the Autobots and the humans despite them being so different. They're able to find common ground and live together. Now, admittedly, the movies don't exactly highlight this pretty well. I mean, considering the nature of Michael Bay's style of filming. And at the same time, everything kind of went to sh** at the end. But I feel like the comics definitely do live up to the movie Optimus Prime's words. The Autobots are first seen with suspicion by the humans, but after they witness that the humans care for one another, it pushes the Autobots and mainly Optimus to actually fight for them, seeing humanity as worth saving, and that despite their differences, there's more than connects them than meets the eye. But besides that, there is plenty and plenty of great action in this comic for fans of Transformers or just comics in general or even action in general to enjoy. The Skybun comics take so many new wild ideas that I'm surprised they haven't been done earlier, Optimus Prime loses his arm during the battle against Skywarp, so he just rips his arm off and uses it as a weapon to fight off Skywarp, which is a bit of a homage to Revenge of the Fallen, but I mean that's still sick as hell. The new take on the origins of the Transformers, Cliff Jumper's new involvement as the mascot of the comic series, and of course, who can forget? How do you feel about going on the offensive? That's such a cool idea! I am surprised no one has done it yet! Look, even when he transforms, you can still see the Megatron arm in there. That's so cool! The comic also has great action. Some people were kind of taken aback a bit by the art style, but I actually really like the art style. I think the art style is great. I feel like people have a very weird misconception about art that it needs to be like super well defined and like with rigid edges. But the thing is that there's several art styles out there. Several series, Transformer series especially, had like many different art styles. And that's just the comics way of doing it. And I think the art style here complements the comic really well. The action feels very kinetic, the designs here are so expressive. When Starscream's angry, you know he's angry. When someone's in pain, you know they're in pain. And the comic art style here gives this amazing sense of movement that very few Transformers comics are able to accomplish. And what would a good story be without a mystery? Ever since the first issue, there's tons of questions that come into your mind. Like where did Jetfire come from? What was he doing? Where's Megatron? While other Autobots and Decepticons are currently in stasis? What happened between Starscream and Megatron? Why is Starscream so afraid of Megatron? The comic keeps you on your toes. It leaves you with many questions that slowly get answered as the comic it goes on. And I actually really really love that. Overall, I think the Transformers comics at the moment are peak Transformers, but we're still waiting on things like Transformers 1, Reactivate, Earth Prices into a, a lot of things which, you know, their quality could vary. The Transformers comics have been consistently great. I don't think there has been a single issue where I will say it was bad or it had left me very unsatisfied. Each issue keeps building up and building up more. It gets me excited, it got me hooked, and I hope that the comics continue to do so. If you haven't checked the comics i'm gonna put a link to the description down below where you can like purchase your own copy physical or even digital or if you, you know if you want up to you i really love these comics i am so happy i gave them a chance in my opinion the comics are peak transformers i might talk about them individually in the future like go over each particular issue and break them down you know in terms of story references and stuff like that because that's how much i love them i love them they get me excited about the franchise they get me excited about these characters they get me excited to talk about them because despite this being like the typical you know traditional tale of the autobots first arrival on earth and their fights against the decepticons there's something very human about this story this time around something 
very visceral, yet optimistic. The comics have brought new life to Transformers in my opinion. In a time when we're all used to the same old stories being repeated over and over again and Hasbro usually playing it safe, the Skyrim comics are unapologetically bold. They tackle on new ideas, new prospects, and take risks, which in my opinion have totally paid off to give us what, in my opinion, is the best Transformer story of the modern age, at least for now. But in all honesty, I'm optimistic, and I think we're in safe hands, which is something that, you know, it feels so weird to say, especially after how critical I've been about the movies with people like Lorenzo in charge, but when it comes to the comics, I can full on trust the comic creators. And you know what? I am all in for the ride. So here's to the Skybound comics, what I consider to be peak Transformers. But if I were to give the issues a score, I think it will rank issue 1 a 9 out of 10. Issue number 2 also a 9 out of 10. Issue number 3 a 10 out of 10. Issue number 4 also a 10 out of 10. Issue number 5 a 10 out of 10. And issue number 6 an 8 out of 10. The comics are honestly peak. I love them so much. I feel like a broken record saying that over and over again. But it's true. The comics are peak Transformers. If you're not reading them, go do yourself a favor and read them right now. I, I know I did spoil some things. But it's very hard to talk about the comics and why it's so great without spoiling a little. But don't worry, I, I still left plenty of shocking moments for you guys to, dis to discover the first time but yeah that's it for this video guys it's honestly a bit of a different video for what i'm usually used to doing i never really make an in-depth video like this basically just talking about my opinion and stuff usually i just explain stuff so it's kind of weird doing a video you know telling you why you should read something but this is something i'm very passionate about because the comics are genuinely great but I want to hear from you guys. Have you read the comics? Have you not read them? Are you planning to? And if you have read them, what was your favorite part? And also be mindful of spoilers in the comments down below. Like some people might not want to be spoiled. Some people might want to be spoiled. You know, it, it depends. So be a little careful about that, all right? But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoy. I want to do more videos around the Skybound comics. But depending on how well this video does, I might, you know, actually go ahead and make more videos around the comics. I might even break down the comics one by one. Or just cover them all at once. We'll see. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoy. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that annoying YouTuber stuff that the algorithm likes so much. And I will see you all in the next video. Stay safe, guys. Anyways, guys, before we go, shout out to our super incredible Patreons and channel members. Scout, James Newbold, Crawley666, TF Cypher, Legend of Soup, King Sparta, Crazy T-Rex, Orino64 Studios, Winso Winso, Inferno65, Super Sailor's former Hedgehogs, Moriarty, Xavier the God, Stitch Productions, Drakey Horn45, Scrub Lordo, and Predaking King Hunter Plays. And also our channel members, Scrub Lordo, Optination Reviews, TF Cypher, Laser Sin, The Crazy T-Rex, and Lord Skywarp, and Surprise Cheetor. Thank you guys for your support, it's much appreciated. If you become a channel member or a patron, you get access to exclusive videos I haven't released yet. You get to collab with me in some of my videos if you so choose to, and access to channel exclusive emojis, and a bunch of other stuff. You also get a shout out to your channel in the description down below, so be sure to check out those guys because a lot of them are up and coming YouTubers who need all the help they can get. But keep in mind this is entirely optional because freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Thank you guys for your support, it's much appreciated. Appreciate it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.